know what? It's time to talk about the decline of the male species in Western civilization. Well, you know, and it's pop music specifically, which is what I cover. Like, as far as dominating the conversation, the women are kicking the men's asses. Have been for a long time. I'm not being angry about it for the record. I'm not one of those idiots. It just is what it is. For the entire 2010s, pop music has been dominated by big name female solo acts. If you imagined a generic music star in the past 10 years, the image you came up with probably wouldn't be a Timberlake or a One Direction. They'd probably look like Gaga or Katie or Rihanna or Taylor or Ariana. It's not an imbalance in representation like in hip hop, which has always been male dominated, or in country music where, like my life, all the women suddenly disappeared. No, there are dudes making big pop hits they just feel a lot less, uh, I guess, substantial or relevant. I mean, the Jonas Brothers are back. I'm a sucker for it's a huge comeback for them. An astonishing cap to a long, winding career arc that saw them as squeaky clean, very religious Disney stars that evolved into adulthood with a complete reversal of their image, a sudden transition into overt sexuality, a band hiatus, various strange solo works and side projects, paparazzi attracting celebrity relationships, stints in other media, and finally culminating with their triumphant reunion and return to the top of the charts. I'm a sucker for you. And I could not care less. Just, like, not at all. They don't interest me, they've never interested me, I don't get them, I don't even get it enough to be bothered by it. They're just there. And that's how I feel about most of the male pop stars of this decade. I, I guess there's Bruno, I like him. And I do still find Drake interesting, but he probably wouldn't want to be called pop, and he's less and less interesting with each new flood of mediocre songs. And who else is there? Adam Levine? Post Malone? Shawn Mendes? These are just not exciting artists. But I'm also starting to think, like, Maybe it's not them, maybe it's me. Like, is it just straight guy bias? I mean, I've picked a job where I watch videos of hot female celebrities in skimpy outfits all day. There are worse ways to make a living. But hey, maybe if I'd stared at Nick Jonas's pretty face a little more, maybe I'd pick up more nuances in his music that I've missed. So maybe I'm not doing my due diligence. Maybe I need to pay more attention. So that's why we're here, I'm challenging myself. There's a new song out right now by arguably the two biggest male pop stars, Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber, and we're gonna cover it. Now, normally I wouldn't, cause, spoilers, it's boring and bad. Doesn't interest me at all, and it doesn't seem to be gaining the interest of anyone else. It's a complete non-entity. It's only noteworthy for being one of several songs by established superstars that dropped with big hype and came hard for that number one spot before getting clotheslined by Old Town Road. But hey, all of that was true of that last Taylor Swift song. And I did a deep dive on that, even though the only thing interesting about it was the person who released it. Now surely I can do the same for Ed and Justin, two men with long, fascinating career arcs that I've been covering for a long time. And fun fact, if you combine the two of them, you get one Shawn Mendes. What's the song about? Well, it's a love song. I'm at a party I don't wanna be at. See, he's at a boring, miserable party, probably full of assholes, I assume. So, you know, a record industry party. I'm at a party I don't wanna be at. And I don't ever wear a suit and tie Yes, Ed, we know. We know you don't. But his baby makes things okay. Cause I don't care when I'm with my baby, yeah. All the bad things disappear. Okay, on one hand, I'm like, boo-hoo, you get invited to parties, poor you. I mean, I'm a YouTuber. I haven't talked to a real person in two weeks. Don't think I fit in at this party. On the other hand, I have definitely clung to whoever I was dating at the time as a life raft in social situations, so yeah, I do relate. Well, you know, I should relate. I don't. And the reason I don't is kind of too basic to discuss. The production sucks. It's the same kind of stiff-ass airport reggae that defined Ed Sheeran's other big terrible pop hit. I'm in love with the shape of the week. Yeah, still awful, by the way. It's just the beat. It flattens out everything that could have been good about it and makes it duller than dirt. Who wants to fit in, anyway? Uh, you do, apparently. This is the most middle-of-the-road beat I've ever heard. Musically, you couldn't be trying harder to blend in. I honestly think the acoustic version is better. And y'all know what I think about acoustic songs, so that's saying a lot. And it's too early to call the song a flop. Maybe it has legs, maybe it doesn't. But I wouldn't bet on it taking off for that reason. And I didn't think Shape of You should be big either, so I could be way wrong. But for everyone I talked to, the title of the song was also their reaction. Hey guys, what do you think about this song? I don't care. So it doesn't succeed on emotion, but its existence does bring out several questions worth exploring. The first of which is this. 
Why the hell is Justin Bieber on this song? Yes, I know they've worked together before. Ed Sheeran wrote one of Bieber's biggest hits, Love Yourself. Baby, you should go and love yourself. Wasn't that weird too? How did that happen? He's a folk singer. What other singer-songwriters do you see working with Bieber? You don't see the guys from Bon Iver writing for Camila Cabello. The thing about Ed Sheeran is, he seems to me like an extremely ambitious guy. If he just wanted to make music people like, he'd be doing that. But he seems to want more, to be a huge name, make big smash hits and hang out with other big celebrities. But he also knows who he is and he never stops being himself. It certainly made him one of the weirder pop stars of our time. And that's his big advantage, there's just not anyone like him. And as much as Sheeran clearly aspires to Bieber's kind of fame, I get the feeling Bieber wouldn't mind being Ed Sheeran either. Bieber's music has only gotten moodier and more downbeat, and he started talking recently about his mental struggles. In fact, I kind of thought we were about to enter a new, dark era of his career when he announced this track. It's out. I don't care. I was like, wow, he sounds seriously depressed. This will be interesting. I didn't know that was the name of the song. Nor did I know it was going to be an upbeat goof track with a video where he and Sheeran clown around with intentionally terrible green screens, stupid costumes. So Bieber's goth period is going to have to wait, I guess. But my question is, why include Bieber at all? What does he add? Sheeran has never needed any help selling his songs before. And at first my thought was, well, at least Bieber's not going to detract from it because Bieber is musical tofu. He's been a popular choice for EDM producers who need a vocalist for years because you can slot him into anything and he'll fit. Of course he was the one who got to bring Desposito to the English speaking world. Compare that to the awful Katy Perry verse on Daddy Yankee's Con Calma where she gums up everything. What the hell are you doing Katy? Now see Bieber does his job. He doesn't clash, he doesn't get in the way. We had a party we don't wanna be at. And yet he does clash, severely, trying to sing Ed Sheeran's lyrics. See, Sheeran, unlike Bieber, doesn't seem to mesh well with anyone. Do you need proof of that? Check out this picture of him and Eminem accepting their gold record for River. You forbidden fruit! I could look at this picture forever. But yeah, that's who he is. Like even on Shape of You, which is Sheeran writing in full, here's a dumbass pop hook for the radio mode, he intended it for Rihanna, and it just came out way too Sheeran-y for anyone but Sheeran to sing. His lyrics are too personal and too peculiar for anyone else. And yes, I include that other song they did together. If you like the way. Which, I mean, let's face it, it sucked. It just fucking sucked. I was reluctant to admit that for a long time, because it seems like a good song, has some of Sheeran's best lyrics. My mama don't like you, she likes everyone. That's the deepest burn I've ever heard. God damn. So it should work, and yet it never did for me. And actually, after 200 listens, it kind of makes my stomach heave. And I've thought about it and thought about it, and eventually I realized the problem. It requires me to sympathize with Justin Bieber. And I just cannot do that. He's always had decent music to lean on, but an acoustic song is something you have to sell with sincerity and emotion, and Bieber just doesn't have it. He's not a soul singer, he has a pop voice for pop songs. I've been hearing Bieber's music for a long time, and I cannot name you a single emotion he successfully conveyed. Unless dickishness is an emotion. Like even on I Don't Care, which is, you know, just another dumb pop song, Bieber doesn't work. He might be a nervous wreck in real life, but no one has ever seemed less anxious on record as a singer. That's a line that needs to be sung by earnest, delicate Ed Sheeran, not smooth, self-impressed pretty boy Justin Bieber. Don't think we fit in at this party. You don't fit in. Are they not pretty enough for you? Is the room full of sevens? Oh. Yeah, it seems like Bieber was tapped solely for star power. Clearly Sheeran's hoping their combined fame will power this limp fart of a song to success. It's like pimping out a car with a dead battery, it's still not gonna move. In fact, bringing Bieber on makes the song seem worse. It seems like lack of confidence in the song, because Sheeran clearly didn't write it as a duet, and the fact that it is a duet does weird things to it. Like in the first verse, Ed Sheeran uses the word I. I'm at a party I don't wanna be at. And in the second verse, when Bieber comes in, it becomes we. We at a party we don't wanna be at. Are they singing at each other? I mean, I was kind of amazed at just the sheer amount of gay subtext there is in this song. Specifically, I'm amazed that that amount is zero. There's none. Not a drop. Seems like there should be, but uh, no. And believe me, I'd call it if I saw it. 
Like, yeah, see this? Beyonce and Shakira definitely went out and had sex after this. And we've been missing with the same girl. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Gay song ever written. Oh, God, the sexual tension on this one's off the charts. Who could even deny it? But this, nothing. I mean, part of it's because the two of them are so boringly straight, but there's more. Like, there's another duet out right now, Dancing with a Stranger. Look what you made me do. And, you know, the two of them both sing like, I'm not over my ex, so I'm out dancing with a stranger. But, like, they both sing that, so, uh, are they the exes? Are they the strangers? Are they two completely unconnected people in similar situations? I don't know. But the thing is, I bothered to ask. Because I felt like who's dancing with who matters. Shall we dance? Hell yeah. As opposed to the dancing in this song, where, well, I don't care. I don't care, and I don't think they care either. Like, this is a song that's emphatically not about what it's about. Like, the overwhelming vibe I get from it is not discomfort or anxiety or relief from those things. It's more like this fratty, rat pack kind of showbiz bros type of thing, you know, or, or hanging out and doing a little song and dance for you, ladies and gentlemen. You know, like an old school musical with Sinatra and Gene Kelly. Actually, I bring that up for another reason. I read a review of those old Sinatra Gene Kelly musicals, Film Freak Central, good site, and the reviewer decided they didn't work together. Because Sinatra in the 40s was this scrawny, big eared runt, Gene Kelly is this perfect looking movie star. Like, Sinatra's gotta be the villain. Or Gene Kelly is the villain, and Sinatra can be like this little guy getting pushed around by this slick asshole. But they don't work as a team. I mean, that's what the guy said. I've never seen those movies. But that's definitely how I feel here. Don't think we fit in at this party. Don't fit in with a party? You don't fit in with each other. I've heard other people say that their two voices don't contrast enough to be interesting, and, you know, that's true enough, but... Part of being a pop star is projecting not just your voice, but your image onto your music. And Bieber and Sheeran, they just have completely different energies that totally cancel each other out. Like Sheeran, you know, he's always had his silly vibe, he likes clowning on himself. It's actually starting to feel a little forced to me, but you know, it's his brand, it's what he does. So if you watch Ed Sheeran clowning around, it's just like, well, that's who he is. He's a fun guy. And Justin Bieber trying to horn in like, yeah, I'm a funny guy too. We're just a couple of wacky cut-ups. No, you're an angelically beautiful underwear model and you're married to another model. But the fuck out, you fucking bully. Don't you have enough? Or if you're watching for Bieber, Bieber in the dorky costumes is him showing he's not up his own ass about being a world-famous pop idol. You know, he can take himself down a peg. And then Ed Sheeran jumps in like, yes, I too am not pretentious about my glamour and fame. Like, Get out of here, you fucking muppet. It's like your kid brother trying to tag along. Go home before you get a wedgie. Like, some team-ups make sense. Jay-Z and Kanye brought out the best in each other. They played to each other's strengths. Ed and Justin played to each other's weaknesses. Sheeran feels like he's having everything unique about him removed to accommodate Bieber, and Bieber seems like he's flailing trying to convey emotions he doesn't know how. And if Sheeran was hoping to power this song through hype alone, I don't think they're those kinds of artists. Hype is not gonna do much for them. Like, yes, I know they're both super famous. That down period for pop music between 2016 and 2018 claimed a lot of careers, but they both came out bigger than ever. The thing is, they did it by playing down to the mood of the time. Sheeran, no matter how pop he's gotten, is a folk singer. He's intrinsically anti-hype. And Bieber should be hype, but he stayed big by going low-key. He kind of disappeared in his music. He wasn't even in his own videos. I just couldn't imagine being interested in his next move. So yeah, bringing it back to where I started, this song is like a perfect representation to why the male pop stars don't seem as important right now. Like these are two of the biggest leading lights of the genre, and they just don't have the juice behind them like an Ariana who can power even mediocre songs to massive success. I mean, again, I could be wrong. It's still early. This could be the song of the summer. In Sheeran's home country, it's doing really well. And it could do it here too. But if it does, it won't be because it excites people. It'll be because the sound is so generically of the moment that it's not even distinct enough to get really sick of. I feel comfortable in my assessment. If the pop establishment was producing any decent male pop stars, we wouldn't have to keep importing them from Korea. A huge chunk of the American public is crossing the language barrier to find teen idols they like. What does that tell you? Tells me we can do a lot better than this. Get it together, fellas, seriously or people really will not care very soon.